Hello, and welcome to Health Within Industry Defined. I'm your host, Anthony Amen. Join me today. Let's take a dive into the world of health and fitness with an over from adversity, pick back to edition, and see health and fitness in a whole new light. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about love. I don't know why I feel like I have to say that in a deep voice. It just comes naturally, and everyone's like, yeah, that's it. No, but really, we're going to talk about love as, as it relates to relationships. Love, in general, is a pivotal part of health. We did an episode, ooh, it must have been about a month ago now, on the importance of relationships, especially as it gears towards losing weight or feeling better and how hard it is to do something on your own when your partner isn't doing something. So now let's talk about the flip side of that is how to have a strong relationship, how to have a strong amount of love, because it's something we all might consciously or subconsciously, but it's on our mind all the time. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Paul. Paul, it's a pleasure to have you on today. Thank you, Anthony. My pleasure to be here. Yeah, definitely it is an absolute pleasure. And I'm sure everyone has the same exact question that I do initially, which is what even got you into this field? Uh, actually, it was more what what I that I was not in the field before. It was kind of an adverse background to that got me into the field. I grew up in a family that was abusive, and because of that, I just was searching for love and found uh, found it in a different way. I found um, that I needed to read books about it. I found the lo five love languages, and the love languages, I read that book four or five times. Because I came from the background that I came from, I didn't get it. I didn't I didn't get it. Uh, you, you mean, Anthony, that if I guess what your love language is, and I cater to that. That's going to be called love. Well, I'm not. I'm not an expert on love in that way. Where from where I came from, but it didn't sound like love. The second thing that Dr. Chapman provided during that that reading was, well, if I find out what love language I am, then what do I do with that? I mean, if I take this survey, what do I do with that? Hello, Anthony. I'm gifts. What do you have for me today? Those are little awkward things, and it doesn't really in, get the relationship across. And that's not love either. So if I tell you how to love me and and you don't do it, then what? You get this little whiny voice that, well, I told you how to love me. Why aren't you doing it? And you get and it goes to that little pity party. So I try to resolve all that. I love the, the principles of the love languages, but I made it so simple. And, that, and that's what I want to talk about today is just how simple it can be to just have a relationship, just be genuine, be authentic in that way. Yeah, and it's it's an awesome topic, and it's actually something I'm pretty familiar with. So I think it's important just to understand that everyone speaks it differently. And it starts from the little things from like the inflections in your voice to what you may perceive you're doing something. I show I love my wife so much, I do X, Y, Z, and then she'll be telling your friends, you know, my husband doesn't love me because he doesn't do A, B, C. And it's so unique to like understand the different things. And I'll be the first to admit it before we really get into what it is. Like my wife and I talk about this constantly. Like what, what are some ways that I can show you that I love you? Because we've had this conversation back in the beginning of our relationship, which is, she didn't understand. She's like, I don't understand. I'm like, well, maybe it's the way I'm presenting that I present my love to you is not the way you like taking it and then vice versa. So it was a really interesting conversation. And then we really did some social experiments just with ourselves and said, okay, now how do our parents present their love to us? Because obviously a different type of love, but it's how do we know our parents love us through, oh, their love language is this way now i understand that's how they're showing me because this is what they show my other siblings or vice versa so before we really get into details is what are just for those that don't know the different types of love languages well, the different styles of love are service so what service looks like to me anthony is that i'm going to wash your car i'm going to vacuum the carpet for you i'm going to do your do the dishes for you if that's your chore i'm going to take that upon myself or, or just that type of service. Or you can just volunteer at the local service places that need volunteers, nonprofit organizations, they're, they're 
galore out there. I like to go to a site, a website called justserve.org. And there, a lot of people post, a service organization post service opportunities on justserve.org. And it really is an opportunity to find places to serve. That's service. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one let's talk about is words. And everybody knows words. That's the words, I love you. It's the words, it's the compliments. It's to say, oh, your hair looks great today. Or you look really pretty today. Or or it's just something. I, I like your hair, by the way, Anthony. Do the lack of. <laughs> uh, I said that just for that. Yeah, so... <laughs> So it's just those are the compliments that you're going to do every single day. Um, those are the words. So let's talk a little bit about time. When it comes to time, you're going to you're going to put the brakes on a little bit. You're going to just pause a little longer. You're going to be out of your phone. You're going to be actually present when you're talking to that person. That's spending time with that person. And that really looks like sometimes it's just I want to hang out. And that if that's their love language, uh, then then that's what they'll want to do. That's what time looks like. Uh, next one, let's talk about gifts. Gifts can be kind of tricky. It can be, gifts kind of encapsulates a lot of the other love languages too, because it could be a gift of service. It could be something that you're doing for them that way. It could be, uh, it could be time. It could be a gift of time. It could be a gift of, of any, any other thing. It does not have to be a gift that you pay for. Um, just a funny story. I have a son that that has started rolling the die that I've got that has a love language on it. And it, it, one time it came up gifts, and he just expressed it out loud. I hate that one. I just I don't like <laughs> I don't like expressing that love language. Uh, and so I so I said, well, well, just roll it again then. And he rolled it again. It's gifts again. He rolled it again. It's gifts again. Four times he rolled it. I guess I'm doing gifts today. So gifts, gifts, just be creative about it. There's a, there's a couple that I tested this with, and one, one day they rolled the die, and the, uh, it said um, gifts, and she didn't like gifts. He, he rolled the die, and it, she didn't like gifts, but she loved the words. So what he did for a gift was write a note and put it in a package, then gave that to her. She was absolutely delighted for that. So the next one is touch. And uh, when, when we're talking touch and respect it, it, in any situation, you're talking the high five, the fist bump, or, or just a pat on the back, something that's just non-sexual in that way when we're talking about loving everyone. And uh, when you're talking about it for, for couples, it could be different, but we're talking about loving everyone. And, and that's a distinction I want to make. I created, created this program when I was single. I did not, like Dr. Chapman suggests, I did not have any significant other. So I said, well, what am I going to do? And I decided, well, I'll just love everyone. I'll just send it out every day, loving everyone. And it's that is a huge difference of this, that it works. It absolutely works. Loving your, just, just loving your significant other in this way kind of keeps you a little myoptic. You're only doing it there. Now I'm going to work. Oh, I don't have to love because I'm at work. My, I don't have a significant other at work. And you just forget that habit. So it's just to keep the consistency of the character, you want to just love everyone. So include everyone when you're sending the love out. So those are five love languages. I didn't miss any. I don't think I did. Got them. You're good. <laughs> Got them. Good, man. A lot of people might get to this point and just kind of be like, hey, I don't want to sit here and listen to a fluke video for thing about loving anyone. But I want to stress some important points that you didn't mention that I think will go a longer way for a lot of people. The first one is doing something for others is a sign of love, period. And if you're concerned about your own personal health, there has been hundreds of studies showing that if you do things for other people you're more likely to live longer you're more likely to have better mental health you're more likely to be in shape there is a lot of things related to doing things for other as opposed to constantly doing things for yourself here and especially in the u.s we live in a heavy eye culture everything is for me 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 but We've watched depression skyrocket. We've watched uh, our resilience levels plummet. 
and all of that is directly, I personally think it's directly related to the fact that we're too busy focusing on ourselves and not about our community. Like a big love language is to your community, not to an individual person, but the people that live in your local area or that are on your rowing team or whatever. That's a community in aspects of doing things for those people and doing it for the betterment of the community is going to help you in the long term and it's going to make you happier and more successful and everything is related back to you showing that kind of love to different groups around you. Absolutely. I totally agree with that, Anthony. Very well said. And I think that um, that as you do that, it's going to, what, what it's done for me is really ease a lot of the pressure of of trying to figure out why are the people doing that? What do they do? Why? Do, what's wrong with them? And, and instead of saying what's wrong with people, the focus of this, and and I just want to show this now. I've got a, a die in my hand. This is it's a die that I created that has the love language on it. I'm showing service right now. It's a person holding a platter like a server server in a restaurant. I've got words up now. It's a heart made with your hands with a conversation fly out of it. I've got a hand holding a hourglass, a hand holding a gift, and then two hands touching for the touch. So each one of those, as you roll the die um, every day, and, and I would suggest you roll it every day, it kind of sets a theme for the day, kind of a, a mantra or a, a maybe a divining tool, so to speak, for the day, that that's how you're going to love all day that day, all day. And then at the end of the day, I've prepared a, a journal page that you can record record what you, what you rolled that day, what opportunities you saw to love in that way, and what you did about those opportunities. So now what we're doing, Anthony, is we're teaching accountability, not only for adults, but you can do it for children too. Just think of this in the school system. If children could learn responsibility for their own actions, instead of trying to figure out what that other person doing, which is out of their lane, and it's not their call. Just try to focus, stay in their lane, focus on who they are, who will they be, how will they love. And, and, and if we do, everyone does that, takes that personal responsibility, we're going to have a lot better world out there. What it's done for me is help me focus on what's right about that person. What can I love about that person instead of what's wrong with that person? And as I focus on that, I didn't have any more anger flare-ups. What, what was happening to me because of the child abuse and, the, and the, the, the growing up that I have, I found that I was having an annoyance and then I was stacking another annoyance and another, another, another until I flash. And that flash would happen indiscriminately. It didn't, it, was, it wasn't timed, it wasn't planned. It was more of a knee-jerk reaction of the annoyances that I've been stacking, stacking, stacking. And I found that the flash came and those annoyances came because I was looking at what's wrong with that person all the time. Take that away from your vocabulary. Move it over to what's right about that person. Focus on the good of other people. Unlike the media, focus on what's right about people. And I think that's, that's going to reduce your stress level because now you don't have to worry about what that person is doing. And I think that a lot of that stress happens because you're worried about what that other person is doing. Focus on what you're doing and focus on how, what kind of person you're going to be. And a lot of that anxiety, a lot of that stress will go away. What do you, would you say to somebody who's like, why would I want to sit there and love somebody or shows any signs of things that they've wronged me? Because in that aspect, it's going to make me seem weak and then they're going to step on me. What would be your response to that? I would say that find uh, someone else to send your love to and just pause that relationship for, for a little while, if you can. Some people can't. Some people are bound in in that way. But if you, if you can, try to pause that relationship. Find, find other people that, that you can light up. And when, what I found is that I'm, so I'm rolling the die and I'm practicing that love language all day that day. What I'm watching for is when people light up. I'm trying to help people make their day. I'm not trying to help anybody be more miserable. If you send out anger, that's kind of the message. You're trying to help somebody be miserable so that they can also make their friends be miserable too. Because if you make somebody have a bad day and they're going to pass that around too, it's like misery, misery, misery. You're sending it out. Contrast that on the love side. Send love out. You make somebody have a happy day. 
they're going to be happy with their friends. They're going to send that love out to their circle of influence as well. And I think that that's what needs to happen in that situation. Don't don't associate as much as you can. Try not to associate with those people that are toxic in that way. And as you or or if you have that, uh, if you have a light relationship that you can just lightly touch on, send love. Only send love and try to heal that relationship with love. It will heal. It absolutely will heal. Yeah, and another most important just tidbit of something I've learned being in business for all these years is a lot of your meanest customers or the people that just you're like, wow, I can't believe they did that, blah, 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 are usually taking out some kind of circumstance that happened earlier in their day or earlier in the week out on you and you're just that crack point. Absolutely. And it's not really anything that you did. It's more of they're upset and like we say, misery loves company. So they want to bring you down and get you agitated because they're trying to pass that on so they can go home and be like, see, even this person did this bad, blah, 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 blah. And it, it just gets carried on that way. So in, in essence, it's a balance of, okay, let's take a step back from a conversation. And sometimes it's worth either A, not getting back to that person right away, letting them cool down, or B, giving them so much up front in a positive light that I've literally heard people go like this in the phone or just in person. They just take a step back and they go, huh. And they just see their temperature mm -hmm. yeah. come way down. And now all of a sudden you can have a conversation. And this this works as well in relationships, right? So I, I like every couple fights, it's a normal part of a relationship. But I've learned that when she raises her voice and then I raise my voice, we're escalating, escalating, escalating. Mm -hmm. So I say, okay, what can I control? I can control myself. I can control how I react. So I'll take a deep breath before I respond and keep my voice tone. And you'll see that she'll sometimes start raising her voice and then realize I'm not. And then she goes, huh? And then brings it back down. Yeah. And that's the same for the opposite. I don't feel bad using my wife as an example, but yes. it, it goes both ways and having that understanding no matter who you're talking to and you're arguing with, if you're showing some kind of love, even if it's just, not screaming at somebody and then it can go a long way and really turn someone's day around. Absolutely. I used to have an email address, Anthony, way back when, when we had um, Hotmail accounts. Uh, <laughs> and maybe there's some people out there that still have them. I know some people. Yeah, yeah. So I used to ha have it. Uh, it was P-A-U and then for the first three letters of my name and then as the just the first letter of my last name. So it said pause. And then I put 10. So pause 10. And I was thinking that ooh, as you pause and take 10 seconds, pause and breathe, take those 10 seconds. That was kind of kind of my email address. Uh, I was thinking of that every time I type in my email address. Just take that 10 seconds, just step back for a minute, and then just pause. It's very helpful. Yeah, definitely. And I do want to get into the different types. I kind of double back up a little bit to the different types of love languages. And sure. then what's the difference between sending and receiving? But first, I just need to give a quick shout out to F Squared Consulting. If you guys haven't heard already, it's a brand new company that myself and Keith have launched to help out specifically entrepreneurs, but this is open to everyone. A lot of people struggle in their own personal lives, We're talking about love right now. But the two biggest things that people feel like heard on is fitness and finance. We see it all the time. So you can go get a consultant for fitness. You can go get a consultant for finance. There's millions of them out there, but there is not one single company that brings it together because like we've talked about time and time again, your fitness and your financial health are directly related. So one has to help another. So if you guys are interested in learning how to create habits and permanently change both aspects of your life to get your health and your fitness under control, to get your finance under control, to get out of debt, Please check us out at fitbodiesfatwallets.com. That is fitbodiesfatwallets.com. Mention this show. Get 10% off of any service. One more time, guys. It's F Squared Consulting. Check us out at fitbodiesfatwallets.com. So now let's get back into the specific love languages. And we went through each one of the dice 
And I remember specifically that it's related to my love language to give isn't necessarily the same one I like to receive. And as a matter of fact, it's usually different. So the love languages I tend to give, like you mentioned gifts, and I think you said it was your son who was talking about how awkward it is to right. give gifts. But a lot of us, and it's more of a societal thing, show love by giving gifts. But a lot of us don't perceive that as taking love. So we'll go give a gift because we love somebody, but we hate receiving them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So can you explain the difference between uh, my love language for giving as opposed to my love language of receiving a little better? I, I want to do that. Um, I, I really want to focus, though, on on the 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 die as you're giving that love away if you're rolling the die over a 30-day period what's going to happen is your roll each one of the five love languages should come up several times over a 30-day period so much so that you'll be a, you'll know it backwards and forwards you'll become what i like to call a love language linguist that's a sexy title i know you want that anthony to add it to all your other titles but you'll know them forward and backwards to give it away. And, and when you start giving it all them away, it gets you out of the, the box that you might be in right now. Most people will focus on what they think their primary love language is and give that away in hopes of the reciprocity there. This isn't like that at all. You're giving away this love without any expectation of it coming back, taking it back to true love. We give without any expectation of coming back, but trusting the law of the harvest or the law of attraction, it's going to come back someday. Not Maybe not today. Maybe it does come back today, but we're just trusting that it's, it's, it is a boomerang, but it just takes a while to come back. Contrast that with anger. You send anger out, you're going to get it worse, 10 times worse. It's coming back right now, right away. This is an investment, a very tiny investment, takes two seconds to roll the die to set the theme for the day. Do that all day long. You're watching for those people that light up. You're making their day that day. That is payback for you right there. If you need any payback, you're going to get that good feeling that you've made someone's day. You're helping someone have a better day. That's And that as you do that, I think you're going to find out what that you'll like something that you give in a way that may be different than what it is that you want something different than what you like to receive. And it's good it be back and forth. I don't believe that a lot of people um, like to receive what they give away. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But I think that this is this will change it up a little bit because you're becoming so familiar with all five love languages. You'll see it when it comes your way. And you'll say, well, that's not my primary love language, but I can see that they're loving on me. I can respond also in love. Instead of just saying, oh, that's nice, but it's not, I don't call it love because it's not your primary love language. You still see it as love. You still recognize it. And it's it's just going to improve your vision a little bit, gives you that peripheral vision, so to speak, that all the love languages come in your way. You can see when people are really loving on you. So that's as far as the giving away. As far as receiving, I think that this die improves that vision as well. You can, they may not know what your primary love language is. Um, but when you light up, they can use their observation skills and say, oh, maybe that's not what his survey said, but he lit up at something different. And I found that quite a bit with couples that as they're rolling the die, it actually, um, like for, there was a couple that she wanted service. She, and that's what her, survey said, the Dr. Chapman survey that she took said service was her primary love language. But when he rolls the die and comes up on words, she actually lights up on the compliments. That's I think that's a more accurate way for you to detect what you like to receive and what you like to send is when people light up. So if it's not too personal, can I ask you for yourself, what have you noticed for yourself after doing this, obviously probably the longest out of everybody, is where do you find yourself liking and the giving and receiving the most? Which one? Uh, as far as receiving, yeah. Receiving I, I, and giving. Which one has been something that you like lights you up to show somebody, and which one lights you up to receive? 
it lights me up to serve people. It lights me up to uh, provide compliments because I, I can I can see some things, and I, maybe it's um, maybe I'm given that uh, that I, I can see what people some qualities in people that they don't even see themselves. And so when I describe that in words, they start lighting up. They say, "Oh, I didn't even know that. I didn't recognize that in myself." And they start to see, "Oh, well, let's let's start working on that. Let's shine that up a little bit." And you just, I like to compare it, Anthony, to a magnifying glass. Anytime you're using a magnifying glass, you're enlarging things. You're making it bigger. So, do we want to look at the faults of people and enlarge that? Why would anybody do that? So why are we, we being critical? When we're doing that, we're actually magnifying that, making it bigger. So if we focus on the right things of people, then it becomes bigger. The good becomes bigger. And I found that um, as far as receiving, uh, from my my gr from growing up, um, just if I wasn't getting whacked, I, the physical touch, I didn't think I was feeling loved. And now it's a lot different. I like the words myself. So I, I really like to send it out. I like to get it back, uh, but that's that's not the only thing. I like service also. I like still like physical touch as well. Yeah, it's it's good to know because you see how different everybody is. And then my other question would be, outside of these different types of love languages, is there anything else that you would recommend to somebody in a relationship, whether it's to a significant other or a family member, whatever it may be? that can help improve their relationship with those people? I think that um, that we've get, we get a few words from the Sanskrit dialect uh, up in northern India that really can help us in, in our relationships. One of those words is nirvana. Another one's karma. But the one I want to talk about is namaste. So at the end of a yoga class, the, the instructor put their hands together, um, kind of in a praying fashion, like the emoji, the praying emoji, when you say thank you for something. And, and then they'll bow their head and close their eyes and say namaste. Now, namaste, as it translates from the Hindu uh, religion, is that the God in me sees the God in you. Or in other words, the divine in me sees the divine in you. And I think that as if we look through that lens, watching for the best parts of people, watching for the good parts of people, that it's really going to cement a relationship because that people want to be around people that they feel loved. They want to be, who wants to be around someone that's angry? Nobody. I don't know anybody that wants to be around angry people. They want to be around loving people. And I think that the, the relationships will be a whole lot better if you're, you learn that consistency, that constancy of sending out love wherever you're at, whoever you're meeting, whoever you're talking to, whether it's the clerk in the checkout saying, wow, you're fast at checking out. How'd you learn that? And you just ask them, be a little bit personable. Does it have to be a transaction? And that's one thing about the uh, about uh, the reciprocity, that if you're giving away what you think you want back, that's, you're, you're on let's make a deal. Monty Hall's gone. We don't do that. We really don't play that game anymore. Because it's not love. It really isn't. It's a transaction. If you're playing that, then you've got to move away from that and tell it. And, and as far as receiving things, we have zero control over beckoning or bidding love to come our way. Zero control. Just remember that what you have control over is sending it out and reacting or responding appropriately when it comes your way. When you understand that and understand it's not about you anymore, it's about them and about how making their day a better day, then your day is going to be better. And that's going to help your health. Yeah. In general, I just want people kind of understand that. And I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but this is such a pivotal part of who we are. And with so much, so many reasons out there right now to not like somebody because they're not part of your team, let's just say, like, Put that on the side and think that we're all human beings and we all want a little love, then maybe we can change how the world operates if we learn how to communicate better because communication is love in and of itself. So maybe that could solve a lot of the issues, but hey, you know, I'm not a politician, so can't get involved in that. Anyway, Paul, I'm going to ask you the final two questions I ask everybody, and I'm going to change my last question for you a little bit. 
I, I just want to leave it at this. Is is there a way that you believe this world as a whole can change and adapt such a method which can, at which everyone can kind of adapt to this sort of method? Is there an answer out there that we can all start doing more for each other and build ourselves up as a society as opposed to pulling everything back towards me and I? I think there is, Anthony. I really, I really do. I really think that if you can understand that you get more, it's like the song in, in Sound of Music that uh, Rolf is singing to the, the girl in, up in the house. He, he says, love in the heart wasn't put there to stay. Love isn't love till it's given away. And I think that if we can develop, start developing that love it, and give it away, it almost feels our, it, it really is, it's almost self-regenerating, fills our own well by giving that love away. And I really believe that it can be a better world if we hold that attitude about sending love out. That's our job. It's not, our job is not to judge one another. Our job is not to say that was great, that was bad, or, or, or you know, just be judgmental about one another, unless we're in a, a position to do so. But even in a position to do so at work, you can say what they did right. You can always focus on what they did right. Magnify what they do right. Forget about what they did wrong. You can help correct them and say, maybe you should try it, maybe you should try it this way. And you can kindly talk them through doing it a better way. And I think that this world's going to be a whole lot different if people would just take that to heart, stay in their lane, quit focusing on what the other guy's doing. It doesn't matter. You have no choice of what that other person is doing. You have no control over that other person of what lane they're going to be in. Just be kind, stay in your lane, focus on being that loving individual yourself. The world will be a lot better place. I love it. And I can just add another point you mentioned, which I can just talk about all day, but I'm definitely not going to, is as an employer, I compliment my employees often because I remember being an employee and never getting compliments, only getting negatives. Yeah. And it makes you feel underappreciated. Mm -hmm. I go out of my way to tell my employees what they are doing correctly. And they, I've actually had a couple employees now come to me and say, I've never had a boss say that to me before. Mm. Like that hurts my heart. Like mm, yeah. if you're doing a great job, I'm gonna let you. No, if you're screwing up, I'll let you know. We'll figure out how to fix it. So, yeah. but anyway, that's a whole other topic. Paul, I'm gonna ask you: How can people find you? Get a hold of you? How can they learn more? And what is your website they can reach out to you on? So the best way to get a hold of me is is rolloflove.com, and it's kind of a play on words. You R O L L. You roll the die. That is outside of you. you. The change that happens within is R-O-L-E. So it's R-O-L-E of love.com. And if you go on there, you can order the book, the journal, the die. I've got a package special on. It's on special right now. It's a whole lot less than even one session of, of counseling. So take the, take the opportunity. It's really, really a great bargain right now. And it's going to be something that's going to bless your life. It's going to help the people around you. It's going to make you feel a lot better, make you a lot more healthy, and make you focus on those goals. Uh, what are you going to do? That's the important thing. What are you going to do? Forget about worrying about what other people are doing. Focus on who are you going to be? What legacy will you leave? I, I love it. Thank you for coming on, Paul. I mean, you guys listening to this week's episode of Health and Fitness Redefined. Don't forget to subscribe to our show. And join us next week as we dive deeper into this ever-changing field. And remember... This is medicine. Until next time.